Welcome back guys to my let's play of Runaway Dream of the Turtle, where we left off, we're on a boat. We're on a boat. I don't remember the rest of the song, but we're on a boat. Um, yeah, we got kidnapped after a very long cinematic, even though the cinematic did not mention how we got kidnapped or anything like that. Just, well, it didn't mention it, it didn't show it. Brian kind of filled in the blanks at the beginning of the chapter. Um, anywho, let's explore what we can and go from there. This way leads to the state rooms, which are nicer than the suites in any hotel. Mine even has a popcorn dispenser in the jacuzzi. Then why are, why are we... Let's go back in there. Jeez. Nah, there's nothing I need in there. What? We can eat popcorn? We can hop in the jacuzzi? You suck, Brian. Like, Jeez. Huh. It's used to open the door, I bet. Behind the first glass door is another that seals shut in order to create a sea-locked chamber to keep water from sinking the boat. No. Oh, Josh was around. <laughs> According to the sign up there, it's the Neptune Suite. The realism in the clouds is evocative and surprising. Jules Verne's Mystery Island by Frank E. Spoonover. Man, whoever designed this room must have been a big Jules Verne fan. Because if I'm not mistaken, that boat over there is Captain Nemo's Nautilus. Cool. All right, let's find Joshua, since we did hear him. Oh. 2,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. That, that is pretty cool. I think it weighs too much. Damn it. I wonder if it's some sort of elevator. Let's see what happens when I press this button. Oh, oh, sushi. Oh, okay, I, oh. Isn't that? Okay. <laughs> sushi! Brian! You finally woke up. It's amazing to see you again. No, I'm the one who's excited. So how are you feeling? Well, a bit nervous, because besides the whole Gina problem, the soldiers and the Trantonite, I can't even remember how I got here. The truth is, I don't even know where we are. Ha ha ha. I got here this morning, but from what Rutger told me about last night, I'm not surprised your memory is shot. And as for the Trantonite, everything has been fixed. You don't have to worry about a thing. What? Let me explain. It turns out that a man flying in some bizarre device was painted inside a tomb within the ancient Mayan ruins of Palenque. It's so weird, it looks like a spaceship. So much so that people call it the Astronaut of Palenque. As soon as I found out, I took off for Palenque. The stone has to be there. The first thing they told me when I got there is that the tomb was robbed more than five centuries ago. Five centuries! Finding the stone was going to be impossible. Luckily, they gave me a hot contact. Paco, a Spanish student obsessed with the whole topic. And he just happened to be working at the temple ruins then. So nobody knows where it might be now? I mean, whatever was inside that tomb? Don Inigo de Malantunes y Gonyon. Search for him. Where can I find him? No idea. Probably at the bottom of the sea since he was one of the cruelest pirates of the 16th century. Nobody knows how his galleon, the Orion, managed to survive the harshest tempests, or come out unscathed from battles with much better armed vessels. Legend even has it that his ship's figurehead shined like the sun. However, his sailors assured it was all thanks to a lucky charm made of stone, an awesome object that Malantunes supposedly found in his youth. 
And now you're going to tell me the miraculous item came from that robbed grave, right? You are right. I've been researching, and it appears that as a kid, Captain Malentunes worked for the conquistador Hernan Cortez. He had the bad fortune of falling in love with Malinche, who was none other than his commander's lover. Cortez challenged him to a duel, ripped out his eye, and left him in the jungles of Chiapas, fewer than 30 miles from the city of Palenque. So you're suggesting that Malentunias stole something from the grave, which protected him for the rest of his life? Very interesting. But how can I find his trail? There's evidence that in 1564, he stole the map of the Manila route, the Spanish crown's best kept treasure. It could have made him richer than the king himself. After that, his trail is lost. Perhaps he set sail for the Philippines. But if you're so interested, why don't you go look in the archives of the Indies? I had heard that everything written on Spain's colonies in the Americas could be found in the archives of the Indies in Seville, Spain, and that even professional treasure hunters go there to locate sunken galleons. So I expressed my gratitude to Paco and vamoosed to Seville. You're unbelievable, Sushi. Hold on. The hardest part had yet to begin. I'm accustomed to breaking passwords and codes, pushing a button and getting quick results. But when I saw the work I'd have to do in Seville... Here it is. Inside you'll find everything you need about galleons, which disappeared from 1560 to 1570. Look for whatever you want, and don't worry about making noise. I'll be alone tonight. I searched through book after book, galleon after galleon, and pirate after pirate until... Captain Malentunez of the Orion. That was it. I found a short passage of what seemed to be Malentunez's memoirs, taken down by a female prisoner who was with him. On the last pages, his scribe wrote that an English boat had sunk the Orion, and after being rescued, this record keeper went on and on about what a scoundrel Malentunez was. Lucky for us, the date of the shipwreck is mentioned, March 6th, 1564, six days after the Orion set sail on a journey from Acapulco to Manila. I had everything I needed to locate the approximate position of the galleon, so I checked maps from those days, did some calculations, and finally managed to determine an exact point in the Pacific Ocean. That's the whole story, Brian. I charted the possible shipwreck site to an area of less than 80 square nautical miles. Then I called Saturn and told him what direction to take. 80 square miles? Isn't that a lot? Don't you believe it. A half hour ago, I programmed the sonar to look for underwater objects with the volume of the Orion. And in a few hours, it will start to relay its potential coordinates to us. Using that data, Dean Grassic will dive down to find out whether we've hit the jackpot or we have to continue the search. My time estimate is little more than two weeks. Three weeks tops. Sushi, that's too long. We have to find some other solution. It's a difficult operation, Brian. The Douglas 3's sonar is equipped with the most advanced submarine detection technology. So, unless you can come up with some sort of miracle, we'll have to wait. Wait a sec. I think I may have missed something. Okay, one huge cinematic once again, but at least we figure out Sushi's here for plot convenience because she has so much money and can buy a big ass boat with big, huge, high tech technology and blah, 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 blah. Okay. We don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about that. Who is this Dean Graphic? Dean Grassic. You've never heard of him? But he's the greatest adventurer and treasure hunter in history. I hired him to go down to the ocean floor and retrieve the Trantonite. 
Yeah, that's a good question. Can we actually trust him? Can we trust him? Of course. He's a man of perfect moral integrity. For example, he is so generous, he even held a contest among the country's youths, and the winner got to go with him on his next adventure. He is a man of his word, as you can see. He's traveling with Camille, the French girl who won the contest. Can we trust the little girl, then? Do you have, will they not decide that it belongs in a museum, and then we have a bigger problem? Uh, what else can I think of? Um, oh, there's so many things I'm trying to think of that could make a pot, plot twist of epic proportions. Could there be dinosaurs in the water that could eat them? Anywho. I've never heard of anyone named Dean Grassic. You don't watch much TV, do you? His program, The Grassic Adventure, is one of the highest rated shows on primetime TV. I recommend it, because it's as if you were really there with him fighting against wild monkeys in the jungle, searching for treasures and ruins, and fighting against polar bears. Dean takes a camera on all his adventures, and every evening he broadcasts images of the most amazing parts of that day's adventures. Plus, he's so cute. Okay. What part of the boat is he in now? A while ago, he told me he'd be in the sea lock room, tuning up the diving equipment. I'd rather not talk about him anymore. Don't be that way, Brian. You'll see how nice he is. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of Wrecker and Saturn... Yes? Now, how is it they came to? When you IM'd me about Trantor and the Amoeba, I thought it would be a good idea to bring along a man of science. So before departing from Douglasville, I asked Saturn to join my team. As for Rutger, well, that was a bit more spur of the moment. They're nice guys, but I think we've discussed their participation enough. Okay, whatever you say. Let's continue this conversation later, okay? Whenever you wish, Brian. Unless I'm supposed to... Oh, oh. I'm really grateful to Sushi for all she's done, but we can't wait for two weeks. Alpha said their time is running out, so Gina's life depends on me acting fast. I don't know how, but I have to find a way to locate the sunken galleon in the Trantonite before it's too late. All right, well, let's go back down, go into the other room which I am guessing Josh was in there. I don't know about that, but I did hear... According to the sign up there, it's the song. Neptune Suite. Let's go in. Yeah, let's see what's in there. Okay, well, let's look around and see what we can find. A portrayal of Neptune, the Roman sea god. Can we take this? Actually, what do we have in our inventory? We have nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's made of bronze, so it must weigh more than my car. However, the trident has come loose. I'll nonchalantly slip it into my pocket. Well, not too nonchalantly, or I may inadvertently saw a branch off of the family tree. Eh, I don't think you need that branch. Okay, what do we have here? We have a bar. We could totally tap into that bar. Uh, I guess that's everything. I, there's nothing to click in this area. Very boring area. I can't, like, destroy anything. Uh, okay, well, I guess we're out of here. Um, let's check out. Can we go in here, then? Nah, there's nothing I need in there. Of course not. Um, we can't go in there, I don't think. No, I wouldn't even be able to stick my fingers between the doors to pull them apart. Can you use a little Neptune trident? Seriously, does anyone believe that has the slightest chance of working? I do, but it's a point-and-click adventure game, so anything's possible. Anywho, um... <laughs> Let's go, I guess, back upstairs. Getting inside without knowing what it was. <laughs> that was risky. What if it had been a humongous hot dog broiler? Well, then we would have had a Brian hot dog with... Here we go. Ketchup and sriracha. Oh. Okay. So, let's see here. Go on the deck. At the command post, why not? I suppose Sushi's turned off the controls so she can run the boat from her computer. No, that would amount to mutiny. 
Sushi says she set it up herself, but I think these things just spontaneously spring up wherever she walks. No, I'd better leave that stuff to Sushi. I don't know. It may have something to do with the sonar. Put that in my pocket? The radiation it emits might make me sterile. Uh uh. Damn it. Kind of wishing he would have. All right, let's see what else we can stare at. Um... One of these days, I'll have to identify some defect or flaw in her, but I suspect it won't be easy. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Nothing. Oh, we can go get the TV. Why not? It displays the sonar data Sushi's using to search for the Orion. No, if Sushi left it on, it must be for a reason. Okay, I wonder if we actually have to talk to her about... Listen, um, Sushi. Yes, trip. Brian? I, I'm kind of worried I'm going to crack into this, but can of worms of cinematic, but we'll find out... I'd like to hear about your trips to Palenque and Seville again. Ha ha ha. You still don't believe me, do you? Well, you're entitled to your opinion. Okay. So it's... Okay. Well, go through this slowly and see if nothing repeats itself. Tell me all about Palenque again. The first thing they told me when I got there is that the tomb was robbed more than five centuries ago. Five centuries! Finding the stone was going to be impossible. Luckily, they gave me a hot contact, Paco, a Spanish student obsessed with the whole topic. And he just happened to be working at the temple ruins then. Oh no, no, not cinematic, okay, this all repeat. No, I don't want to see the cinematic. No, I can't escape it. Can I like... Okay, there we go. Oh, oh good, the escape button works. Okay. Okay, good. You good. must have millions of frequent flyer miles from all those trips you've taken. Don't think this was easy for me, Brian. If I hadn't had the Douglas Corporation's financial backing, we wouldn't be here now. Well, we'll talk about that later. Whatever you... Let's continue. Whenever you wish, Brian. Okay. Give her... Well, you... look who's here. I'm gonna go say hello. I'm assuming Saturn. Oh, that dude. Holy big Rucker. hat. Rucker. Long time no see. And what interesting Yo, patio. Brian. Feeling better than yesterday. This may seem weird to you, but I can't remember anything. Of course. That's the nice part of Herbidos. Actually, the last thing I remember is that I got to the port in San Diego with my friend Joshua and... Slow down, man. Slow down. That little amnesia you have is caused by the berries I put in Herbidos. Berries? The only way to remember what happened is... Oh, just my luck. Raw salmon again. Salmon? You are one crazy man, man. No, the only thing I can do is refresh your memory. Ugh, I was afraid of something like this. Come on now. Yesterday evening, I left the yard to wander at the view and fill my lungs with clean ocean air. Calm yeah, down. Yeah. Sushi's yacht must be nearby. Uh, oh no! A Trumpeterus fatocranium, the most perverse species of the universe! Run, Ryan! We will devour you with this brain sucking head! Rucker! Hey, Brian. My friend, it's been so long. Is that bro doing okay? Hey, don't worry about Joshua. Where's Sushi? She said to take off upon your arrival, and that she's going to catch you up later by a helicopter. Oh, we arranged to meet up in Palenque when we were IMing. 
and yesterday she sent me a message at the Anchorage airport saying she's waiting here in San Diego. You wouldn't happen to know why. No, come on, I'll finish the bong and we get down to navigating. You gonna help me finish it off? Go back to your two-bit constellation, you coward, fat-headed beast! Thanks, Rutger. But I haven't slept for days and I can hardly keep my eyes open. No problem, man. Just lie down in the state room, and you're gonna come out fresh as an herb. Impossible. I can't sleep in trains, planes, or automobiles, so forget about boat naps. That's cause you never try my herby dose. Don't trust that nut, Brian! It's probably some sort of perverse potion! Here's a recipe based on herbs, mushrooms, wild berries, seeds, everything natural. Good stuff. It's I refined to fight the insomnia. And you'll have some amazing dreams, better than with your Waskel. I don't know, Rucker. Your recipes have always seemed a bit potent to me. Of course, that's why they're so cool. Let's dine. You have some herby dose. And hey, man, you're gonna sleep better than a zombie. Now I remember. And I refused to take the herby dose. Yeah, but didn't you find the orange juice a little strong? Besides, now you're in an amazingly amazing mood, no? Well, I don't agree with what you've done, but I guess you're right on that one. I haven't felt such inner peace for a long time. But explain one thing to me. What? Holy long scene that... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to do that one. Yeah, we'll go down. Could you explain what the Rastafarian religion is all about? No. The ingredients of Herbidos are legal, aren't they? Don't worry. Be happy, man. We be 12 miles from the coast, so sit back and enjoy. I like to point out that the infamous helmet is here. And there's a broom. I wonder if we could take the broom. That's the oh, telepathic hey, helmet go. you've got there, isn't it? Telepathic? Well, it's the one that you gave to that bird brain Saturn a while back, man. But I want it fair and square, and it's mine now. I brought it to the boat, cause it really freaks me out. But for the last three days, it don't work. Typical overvalued Babylon machine. By the way, Joshua came here before man, and told me he had a similar device. But that his was much awesomer and less pathetic. That whole thing about Saturn being an idiot, it's all in good fun, right? No, I say it in the worst way. Saturn, imbecile. Actually, Joshua built it to communicate with the Trantorians. When he managed to get abducted, I kept it. Oh yeah, and that old thing about the Martians and the stone they lost. I know how difficultly difficult it is, cause I lost one the other day, and I felt that evil feeling at the tip of me dreadlocks. The important thing here is not the helmet, it's... It's what? Which we we'll don't talk later, tell Rucker. him. You're in charge, Jer. Um, by just a minute. Oh. 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 I, I. Okay. Hey, did you just call me a jerk? Come on, I was just joking. I'd never insult such a sweetly sweet Babylonian like you, no matter what a jerky be. Are you sure you can't explain the Rastafarian religion to me? Yeah! I wanted to tell you something, but I can't remember what. Isn't it sweet? It's the Herbidos. It has some righteously righteous after effects. You take it easy, man. You're gonna get over it fast and we split. Okay, but I want that helmet, which I'm guessing we're gonna have to do some trading. Like the first one in order to get it. That's the telepathic helmet Joshua made to communicate with Trantor which I gave to Saturn as a gift. Okay, I'll grab it. No, man. What? Don't want to make you vex, man, but the element is mine, and it stays here. I don't think it belongs to Rutger. It's huge. Maybe I can use it for something. It's a hog bristle broom, very durable. The lid is transparent, and there's nothing inside. No, 
I'll open it if I find a need to chill something. It's completely deserted. It's kind of a cheap model. Besides the hole in the middle, it doesn't have any special features, like a footrest. No, when it comes to life preservers, I prefer a modern vest to a cork ring. Call me choosy if you like. Pots, hose, insecticide, hoe. Darn, nothing I need. Take the sand, man. What? The sand in those sacks is so finely fine. I mean, oh, please take one. Thanks, but I don't think I need any sand. You must be pulling my weed, man. Such fine sand. Please take the sand or I will lose my temper. Okay already, I'll take a sack. Great, now I have this thing to lug around all day. You know what, it's gonna, good chance it's gonna be pretty important, so. No, I don't have any time for guard. I don't care, well, we'll take it. And we'll look at this lovely questionable item of his. It's a sort of water pipe that allows you to inhale the fumes of the, well, I mean the aromatherapy things that Rucker uses. I doubt I could find any use for it. Any legal use, that is. That's true. Oh, I can imagine we could find some use for After it. After a closer look, it's not so surprising that Joshua mistook him for an extraterrestrial. Yeah, that giant hat of his, like, holy big hat. Um, let's talk to him. Just one... Th See what? what else we can get out of him. Um... You haven't seen Joshua lately, have you? Your boyfriend? Well, yeah, but now he's around here. A Roman as he pleases. Not until he seen me without me hat. But when he seen me dreads, he said I was a Medusianus Fumensis. Whatever that is. I wish I could live as sweet as your lover boy. About Saturn and the helmet. What that? How did you win the helmet from Saturn? Fair and square, man. Fair and square. It was such a fairly fair and square affair that only a fool would say what he said. The important thing here is not the helmet. It's... It's what? Oh, he can't... Oh, okay, we gotta figure out what we'll talk the later, last Rucker. bit is. You're in charge, Jerry. Just a minute. Oh, I see what's happening. I wanted to... Don't worry, be happy, man. Okay, something's missing here that we need to kind of fill the blanks in. Doesn't look like there's anything interesting, but I'll take a look. Because we want that helmet. I'm assuming we need the helmet. Oh. Holy smokes! Man, they should declare this a disaster area. I guess they just waxed the floor. Someone could slip and break their neck. Can we sweep our way over there? Yeah, man. Right. Oh. Ever since I saw that broom, that's all I can think about. My cleaning frenzy is about to boil over. Yeah. However, I better repress that urge and remain on task. You know, I, one thing we can use. I imagine we can use sand on that. That won't do any good. Oh, fine. I was thinking it'd be an easy way for him to walk on it, because that whole using kitty litter on ice, it kind of gives you... That grip. Possibly the same thing with the sand. Anyway, we need to find Saturn and Joshua. Wherever those two are. Because I'm assuming I have to talk to them. And I I did hear Joshua. I did hear his singing earlier. I don't know where. Can we use this on the door? Hmm. I don't know. Nah. Nope, not in there. No, I wouldn't even be able to stick my finger. Okay. It's used to open the door, I bet. No, I have enough experience with these number pads to know you can't guess the password at random. That's true. And we don't have anything to use. No. To give us that number again. I don't think... Okay. Well, where can I go from here? Maybe. We'll check in here again.
Look who's here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Saturn. Well, look, it's Sleeping Beauty. Did you dream about anything interesting, BB? Well, no, I didn't. I don't remember what I dreamt. Oh, poor thing. Are you aware that Friedrich Kekulé discovered the hexagonal structure of the benzene molecule thanks to a dream? Well, no, but... And that Robert Louis Stevenson came up with Jekyll and Hyde while he was asleep? That's very interesting, but... There are no ifs, ands, or buts. So listen, stop contradicting me and tell me about you. That is interesting. I didn't know about the Jekyll and Hyde and... Yeah, that's actually an interesting tidbit. Um, you anyway guys, I'm gonna end the episode here. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you're enjoying the Let's Play so far. As usual, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and check out my other videos as well. And with that, you guys have a good day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!